We're back with season four Clash of Trades and we're bigger and faster than ever. This year's theme is racing and we've partnered with the Stuart Haas Race Facility in Kannapolis, North Carolina. Bigger and faster, you ask? We're gonna show you the road leading up to this championship. 81 schools participated in a qualifier round and 16 schools moved into the regionals. This year, we'll take you to each of the three regional stops to learn more about what our competitors face to make it to the championship and become the 2024 Clash of Trades winners of Project MFG's Advanced Manufacturing Competition. Follow, like, and subscribe to support our journey. Now let's get this show on the road. I'm your host, Jim Bollinger, and this is Clash of Trades. Let's start the engines and fire up the machines at our first regional stop at T's facility for advanced manufacturing at Texas A&M and College Station, Texas. Let's meet the first group of teams. Hi, I'm Kais O'Donnell. Hi, I'm Kyle Venable. Hey, I'm Caden Delancey. Hey, I'm Bryson King. Hi, I'm Michael Silver. We're, we're the team from Audrey Tech. Tech. In Oklahoma, we're the uh, first high school team that's made it through. It's a chance to be able to prove that Oklahoma does have a higher level of competition and a higher level of skill that's able to compete in this trades. Hi, I'm Sam Bennett. Hi, I'm Natalie Malone. Hi, I'm Andrew Rice. Hi, I'm Connor Thomas. Hi, I'm Ralph Tolman. We're the high school team from Bacon Sky Career Center. I'm just excited to be here. And it's especially like a really exciting and crazy opportunity because there's more like college people competing than high schoolers. But the fact that we made it is like a really, really great achievement. Hey, I'm Kellen Bruns. Hey, I'm Riley Yoakum. Hey, I'm Connor Bean. Hey, I'm Aaron John. We're it's E from Vincent's University. University. Just being able to come down here and see different equipment, see different people, see other schools and how they stack up. Yeah, I'm really proud of my team. I mean, we went from 81 teams, to now there's 16 competing in this round. For these regional rounds, competitors will be programming machining and welding intake manifolds for these cars. We're making the, the mount, the throttle body housing itself, along with the bell crank and the blade, and then the throttle body rod. Precision is the key because these parts will be used in the championship. So at this regionals, we are being judged on the machine parts, the welded parts, the reverse engineering parts, the total project costs, the production plan, and the teamwork. Hi, my name is William Awar. Hi, my name is Dakota Sprunger. Hey, I'm Mark McKinley. Hi, my name's Kian Bush. Hey, I'm Caden Ritmeyer. We're at South Athens High School, School from Indiana. Indiana. We were a little nervous coming in knowing we were competing at a collegiate level. I feel like we'd be a little bit of the underdogs, but I'm feeling it's flipped all the way around. We've been practicing. I think they might even be the underdogs because of how well we work together and how well we set ourselves up for success. My name is Carson Giroux. Hi, I'm Adam McArdle. Hi, I'm Titus Palicelli. Hi, I'm Steven Adams. We are We're the Green Green Tech. Tech. Finals are gonna be kind of NASCAR oriented, excited. They said they'd get us at the Coca-Cola 600. The pressure's on. Hi, I'm Thomas McNorton. Hi, I'm Isa Lewis. Good day, I am Troy Black. Hi, I'm Ethan Woltage. My name is Dean Patrick. Hey, I'm Mason Stalbo. We're the team from Lowell High School, Indiana. I've always had a passion for cars and anything that has four wheels. And now that I have this chance to make parts for these cars, it's just it's just amazing. I never think I never thought I'd be here. I was getting a little nervous at the beginning of today because I knew like this is real. I can't mess up. Howdy, guys. Welcome to the Texas A&M T's facility for advanced manufacturing. We're very excited to have you. My name is Nathan Panic. I'm the technical lab manager of this machine shop. We're excited to host region one of Clash of Trades this year. Congratulations on making it this far. Are you all excited today? Yeah! Good luck, everyone. I wish you all the best. Your time starts now. Let's get going. Let's go! As soon as the time started, I clocked in. I got to work straight away. I think we'll do really well. I'm excited. We just gotta stay focused and stay on task. We had to figure out which people were gonna be putting the tools together, throwing the machine together, getting the vise trimmed in, being able to set it up quickly as possible. Right now, I am getting all of our tool library pulled up. I'm telling them the length that we need out of the holder so that we can have the proper clearances so that we don't have a collision with between the vise and the tool holder. Our plan was to get the part for Sam, our welder, as quick as possible because he already has the two pieces he needs to weld. So we started off with a throttle body. 
Mainly right now we're just building all the tools that we're gonna need. So he's cleaning out the collets, make sure there's no gunk stuck in here. As soon as the guys got the programs done, I took the programs from them, put it in the machine, and then I hit go and cuts away. My name is Nathan Panic. I work at the Tees facility for advanced manufacturing. I'm a technical lab manager. We get to host the first regional of Project MFG this year, which is very exciting for us. I think it's really cool that the DoD and Project MFG are trying to get more young people into the machining industry. It's good to see that we're all kind of working together as a nation to revitalize our industry. The throttle body regulates airflow into your car's engine. As you place your foot on the accelerator, the throttle blade opens, increasing airflow, therefore increasing fuel flow. Any inconsistencies or malfunctions in the throttle body can reduce horsepower and performance significantly. So the teamwork in this competition is so important. Our team dynamic, it's like, I would say we're like five brothers almost. All, right, we got stuff to All of us play like a big part and we're always here to help each other. We're a great group of guys, we've really clicked. We all take it very seriously, but some of us are quieter and some of us are louder. That's just who we are, so, but we work very good together as a team. Teamwork is an essential goal to all CNC machining. It really brings together camaraderie on the job. It's a blast. We're all high schoolers, but I already have a job in the trades, all of us do. Whether it's working for our dad as a welder, or the rest of us are working in machine shops. Being a high schooler, competing against college kids, it just makes me feel good because, you know, we have really strong competition. These are, these are guys that they work four or five hours a day in their, high, their college shops, and it's just, it's really cool to be able to compete with that level of skill. It really elevates you when you're going against such good welders and machinists. We think the most challenging part's probably gonna be the main body. It requires full five axis, which is not a super common thing. I mean, most high schools don't have access to five axis machines. The difference between the five, three axis and five axis, with the three axis, you only have your, your X, which is this way, your Y, and then your Z, which is your up and down. You're able to touch all five sides of the part in a five axis. What I do is I have to, in my computer, tell the machine what to do and how to do it to cut the part. And then I give it to the operator and he, basically just puts it in the machine and it cuts it. It's definitely a different experience being in here, like in this shop. And in our shop, we don't have four CNC's and we don't have five axis CNC's. So we only have like, I think we have a three axis. It's important that they're prepped, well, correctly so that nothing happens to the tool. And if something happens to the tool, well, it is, um, machining on the part, then it can mess up the part and affect their score. So for this competition, we're running five axis machines. Our machines are gonna be tipping in all different directions throughout the competition. So we gotta make sure that our part is perfectly zeroed in and trammed into each one of these directions. Cause if it's slightly off and you tip one way, you're not gonna get a proper axis of rotation. To move the tool and like probe and stuff back and forth, we use this kind of like coordinates on like a graph the Z, the Y, and the X, and you press handle job, which makes this be able to turn. In order to trim in the vise, you basically got to dial it in and set it to a couple hundred thousandths of an inch. A hundred thousandths of an inch is about half a human hair. Man, I wish I could see. The more things that are wrong with it, it takes more time to machine it and clean it up and make it good. Half of my team, they're working at the machine, so they have to make sure that the nothing crashes so we don't uh, machine into any of the harder surfaces that could break our tools. It can ruin our entire project if we just make one small mistake. So yeah, we had a couple hiccups, but the big thing was just uh not realizing the orientation of the part we needed to make in terms of uh, how it was gonna be welded. We should have probably partnered with the welder more at the very beginning. We were basically, each side was like, oh, well, he was looking at his print like, oh, it's pretty easy, I can do this, blah, blah, blah. And we weren't thinking about, okay, how are we gonna have to position that part into the vise in order to not have a bad surface somewhere. That's the end of day one, and what an exciting day it's been. For some of these teams, this is the first time ever competing using a five axis machine. 
and some of these teams are high schoolers. How exciting is it to see them operating at such a high level of professionalism and precision? Who will make it and who will wash out? We'll see you tomorrow. I'm in like an interview right now. You know, if I win this this round of the Project MFG competition, I get to go to the Coca-Cola 600, right? That would be cool. That's one race I've never been to. You'll be right down there where all the NASCAR garages are too. I just want to call and let you know we're working on a NASCAR part. Awesome. I think that's cool. So enjoy your time down there, son. Dad loves you. Love you too. Welding and machining go hand in hand. Not a lot of people, I don't think, understand that. There is a lot of work between the two. Well, when I get this part, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fit check it first, make sure I like it the way I want it. If not, I'm gonna bring it back over to these boys and have them fix it. And then after that, clean, clean, clean and weld it. I'm a uh, third generation welder. My grandfather really inspired me. It was probably when I started around four is when I really started hanging out with him every day. I know he'd just love seeing me grow in this industry. This is our little insert that's gonna go down into this, uh, the, the assembly model for the throttle body over here and I'm about to go clean it up, start welding it. So right now, I'm just using my acetone to clean down my edges, and then I'm using my wire brush to get all the aluminum oxides out and make sure my metal's all clean and everything's gonna be good and I won't have any impurities or porosity or anything like that. You smell, you hear, you see everything. You taste the smoke and your everything needs to be locked into welding and nothing else. You shouldn't be focusing on anything else. Welding and machining is being scored at the same level in this competition and I'm one person, my team is five kids and I mean that puts a little bit of pressure on me but it's nothing crazy, nothing I haven't practiced so I really think that I can pull my own weight. Started, you know, a little nervous, a little hiccups, just trying to play with the metal and see how everything is gonna weld together. Um, but once it was all tacked up, Everything ran smooth like it should. I feel pretty confident in it. Well, I'm done welding. It was pretty challenging just to figure out because you have to put this whole plate together and you can't have it warp. That was probably the main thing, just trying to keep it from warping and trying to keep everything aligned and straight. We're halfway through the competition right now. We're in high hopes. We got all of our tools set up. We were feeling pretty good, and I think we're feeling even better now. We are now on the main portion of it. This part here uh, is the uh, stainless steel part. We had that one done in about 30 minutes. Uh, this part is the biggest and longest part. Uh, about three hours was the cycle time it told us it was gonna take. We managed to get it down with, uh, it doesn't look as, as good, but it's it's, most of it's to the size that it needs to be. Uh, we got it out of the machine. I'm, we're all very happy about that. We'll go from the bottom. Waiting on the second part, which my team is machining right now. It's a throttle body that'll fit on top of my piece that I just welded. So we were halfway through. We had this big gouge inside of the part. Do we scrap it? What do we do? And in the process of putting these steps in here, roughing it out, we had a tool that was too short and the actual tool holder came in and we drug that across there. We've went from front runners to feeling like we were in the back. So only with a couple hours left in this competition, we're, I mean, all of us are working together to try to get this done. Basically, we've ran into a problem that we need to somehow secure it. We need to flip our part over and secure it. But here's my problem. We need to take material off the back side on my head wart. No, we don't. Don't? No, it's already done the size. Yeah, we're fine. Yeah, that, ju that just confuses me because the holes are all the, way, put all the way through on the front. Trying to get the parts done, it good, and we don't crash the machine because that'll, that'll be bad. Competitors, you have one hour remaining. I need you to rename everything gotcha. in the USB. So what happened is we were trying to drill the hole and we drilled all three holes through, but then we were trying to spot drill the hole to give it like a lead in for the tap. 
but we skipped through the pro part in the program that spot drills those holes. So we had to re-go back up inside the program to do the spot drill. There's only a few minutes left and some of these teams are cutting it close. Will they finish in time? Let's find out. It's, it's really nerve wracking. God, that's making me nervous. If something goes wrong right now, we would have to scrap the part and completely start over again. We have roughly 10 minutes left. Feeling okay about our part. I have no clue if we're gonna finish. We were just kind of panicking if we we're gonna be able to get it done or not. It's gotta go, thanks. I mean, overall, I think we performed well. Our part, what did get finished, finished well. I'm, uh, I'm happy with how it turned out overall. Good job, boys. Good job. Yeah. I would say probably getting this out as fast as we wanted. We had a hard time with that. I think we were about an hour behind what we expected, but we got it done. Good job, guys. Oh yeah, yeah. Good job. We're done. We've learned a lot. I mean, I can't even like, I can't even say it. There's, we've learned so much. So there was a lot of teams that were doing very well in the competition. I know it was very, very close between several of the teams. I'm a, a little anxious on how it actually turned out and what the judges are going to think. There was a lot of stuff that we had to overcome, but we all did it together and I'm really proud of our team. Project MFG is giving us one of the coolest things we've ever done. It gives you a whole different perspective on like the world we live in. We get to compete, get to meet each other, we get to see what other schools are doing. Been rooting for them the whole time, the whole team. Being here is just like really cool. It takes a lot of skill to be able to do all the things that we're showcasing here with Project MFG. Regionals 1 went amazing. Be sure to check out episode 2 where we go to Greenville Technical College for Regionals 2. The scores are too close to call, and the winners will only be announced after the third regional competition, so smash that bell below and stay tuned. Clash of Trades Season 4 was made possible by the Gene Haas Foundation, Department of Defense IBAS, Haas Automation, Lincoln Electric Company, Mastercam, Zeiss, Stuart Haas, Mitatoyo, Phillips, and the many trade schools that participated. If you would like to help close the trade worker deficit, go check us out on our website at projectmfg.com. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to watch the rest of this racing theme season.